Greetings, Sekiro Goru Guru here, back with another video. And here are my best tips and tricks for Sekiro. See how many you already knew. If you claim to know all of them, then you're a liar. At number one, we have the lead somersault. To perform it, all you have to do is hold the direction away from the ledge whilst hanging and press the jump button. It's a useful trick to get behind your enemy for a surprise attack or just to show off. At number two, we have the brace guard. Certain attacks from enemies will cause you to stumble, making you lose your balance and fall to the ground, leaving you vulnerable to more attacks. The brace guard, however, stops this. Press the block button as you stumble back before you fall, and you'll stay on your feet and enter a guard. A good tactic to recover from an advancing enemy. At number three, we have super armored enemies. Most enemies are briefly stunned when you attack them. The ones that resist these stuns, such as the majority of sub-bosses and bosses, have a hidden gauge called Super Armor. This means that you must reduce this Super Armor bar to zero before they will be stunned. Some enemies always have higher bars than others. The Ogre here has a Super Armor value of 400. As the thrust attack does 80 Super Armor damage per hit, it will take five thrust attacks to reduce this Super Armor bar to zero. If, however, you wait too long between attacks, his super armor gauge will refill, and you'll have to start again to reduce it. Here you can see the list of super armored enemies in the stats. And now here's a quick message from our super sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new RPG game with almost 10 million players worldwide. What does Raid offer I hear you cry? Well how about over 400 champions to collect? A fully voiced story campaign, a PvP arena, 16 factions to assemble your team from, and over one million possible champion builds. You can find me in the game under the name Tyrannicon. Will Frostgar dominate the PvP? Probably not, but maybe the Guru will. Maybe. Raid has an almost perfect score on the Play Store from over 200,000 reviews. There's also a new cool rewards program for new players. Get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So go to the video description, click on the special links, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. It's free to play and has nearly 10 million downloads. So come join me, won't you? At number four, we have Wall Hug Stealth. Now, a lot of people realize that wall hugging reduces your visibility in the same way that crouching does. This can be used throughout the levels to stealth kill certain enemies to make things easier for you. Simple, but effective. At number five, we have step dodging. This is a great technique to avoid attacks and leave your enemies open to counterattacks. Hold left or right and press the dodge button when your enemy swings at you to dodge to the side. It works best on enemies that have lots of linear attacks and it is a lot easier than deflecting. So if you have trouble with the deflect, then try the all powerful step dodge. At number six, we have unbreakable posture. Your posture can never be broken by deflecting an attack even if the posture bar is maxed out and flashing. So keep this in mind when it is nearly full, because you don't always have to go on the defensive. Don't just spam the block button to try and deflect, however, as the game has a built-in mechanic to lower the deflect window if you start spamming the button. Staying with posture tips, you might not realize, but posture recovery is halted when you perform most actions such as attacking, sprinting, jumping, and dodging. The same does apply to enemies, however. You can reduce your posture quickly by holding the block button. Its recovery rate is also linked to how much health you have. If you've got between 80 to 100%, your posture bar will recover a lot faster than if you only have 50% health. At number eight, we have the ledge grab. You actually don't need to be facing a ledge to grab it in midair, so keep that in mind when you're chasing or escaping an enemy. You can even be facing in the opposite direction from a roof and still grab it. At number 9, we have Guard Cancelling. By pressing block at the very start of an attack, you can cancel the attack and instead go into a guard. This is useful for when you have already pressed the attack button, so you can see your enemy is starting to attack you as well. So by pressing block quickly, you will pull out of your attack and instead deflect theirs with the guard cancel. At number 10, we have Fall Damage Restrictions. Any fall shorter than 20 meters won't cause you damage. In fact, you'll only be able to walk or sprint off an edge if it is a 20 meter drop or less. If the drop is high enough to cause you damage, then an invisible barrier will stop you from walking off. This applies in combat too, so you don't need to worry about falling to your death when fighting near a large drop. Unless the enemy has a knockback attack, of course. At number 11, we have death blow alerts. There are four types of death blows, the standard bat stab being the most useful. 
The plunging death blow is the loudest, however, and will alert nearby enemies. So think twice before using it if you don't need to. Staying with death blows, did you know that the death blow markers vary in lengths? Posture break an enemy by deflecting and the death blow marker will last for just one second. Posture break an enemy with an attack, however, and the marker will last for three seconds. At number 13, we have time of day. Did you know that enemies get stronger depending on what time it is? The game starts at morning, when enemy stats are at their lowest. Time only changes to noon once you defeat either Genichiro or the illusionary version of the corrupted monk. Deciding which boss to beat first also has consequences when you progress to evening. Kill Genichiro first, and new enemies will appear in various places, such as the Sunken Valley and the Hidden Forest, which will be in the forms of spirit nightjar ninjas. Defeating the illusionary version of the corrupted monk first, however, and you'll be facing vengeful Maibu villager spirits. At number 14, we have the contact medicine trick. If you're struggling to beat enemies that use poison attacks, such as Juzo the Drunkard, then use contact medicine. This item afflicts you with a weaker poison that does a lot less damage than the regular poison status. While it's in effect, enemies with poison attacks cannot poison you further, and you won't have to worry about your health when using contact medicine, as it drains too slow to worry about. And at number 15 we have mid -air charging. Certain combat arts are slow to use, such as Shadow Rush, leaving you open to attack. With the mid -air combat skill, however, make sure to charge the move in the air so you use it as soon as you land. This is a great way to take advantage of enemies that are weak to these charge moves, the Ichimonji being another good example. And that's it! 15 sacred Sekiro tips discovered by the Guru from Ancient Tapestries. They killed your sister, and I got a hard on her. What are you gonna do about it? Taunt the enemies to anger them, makes them reckless. 